Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Jeffrey Mitchell. I'm out here today. I was thinking this morning, over the years, I've been doing this journaling or writing. I used to write dailies. Uh, I am so infused with myself that I believe I started blogging for blogging was blogging back in 1997 I would actually write to the internet not to anybody but actually out to the internet because the relationship I had back at that time had ended and a major communication channel was interrupted and over time I've had relationships well, one relationship, probably with the best friend I ever had. And we got to the point that where, you know, we had connected and been experienced and familiar with each other at such a high level that we could just about say anything and understand anything and go from there. So it was to the point, we were talking one time, I was like, you know what, don't respond. <laughs> Just let me talk, don't interrupt. It's not about you, it's about me saying what I gotta say. And she understood. So the first day I ever wrote, it starts off going, hey, <coughs> Because that's what I would always greet. The first, one of the first relationships that I established and maintained via chat. And so I went on writing the dailies for years. It didn't turn people start blogging. And now I'm so infused with myself, if I didn't say that already, I, like, I wanna say that again. I am so infused with myself that I believe what I'm doing now. History may look back upon and say, nobody else was quite doing it that way. There's a little certain difference, a subtle difference that I can't even recognize yet. Even in my genius that I'm doing that nobody else is doing. Something that may or may not make this a little different and just a touch more special. Maybe it's the angle that I go at right now, saying these things, making these things. Oh my God, I'm not wearing the thing. Jesus. I'm gonna go back to saying that I'm infused with myself again. Infused with myself. I like that word. Today's word is infused with myself. And in saying that, I'm hoping that all of you are also infused with yourself. <clears throat> I'm a fan of selfishness and self-firstness. I'm a fan of apathy. I believe in apathy and the regulation of empathy. Empathy must be regulated. But I'm also grateful for those of you out there who have no empathetic regulation, care for everything, support everything, and just have a natural tendency and gravitation to be supportive and be of service. To be of service. That is not me. I like to do what I like to do, which is the same thing that people who are of service do. They do what they like to do. But usually what I like to do has a direct correlation or direct 
effect on me because I am self first. And once again, I wish that for everyone. I think everyone should be a little self-infused, self-first, apathetic, a little less empathetic or sympathetic. Take care of yourself. Get your shit together. by any means necessary. And that right there, that statement by any means necessary, opens it up to being handled in any manner that's possible, which means that <laughs> you probably could use some political tactics and social maneuverings that I may or may not agree with. <laughs> uh, you got to do what you got to do to survive. Whatever you are, you are. And whatever you need to do, you need to do. There is no right or wrong. There just is. So when it's all said and done, and you laying on that, on your deathbed looking back, Many, many, many times it's been said that people regret what they didn't do, the chances they didn't take. But you got to be you. The only thing you can do is be you. The only thing I can do is be me. Whatever I am, I got to be me. And I also encourage everyone to love themselves with the immensity that I do. Immensity may not even be a word, but you know what I'm talking about. Love yourself so much that if you were to love someone else one third of the amount that you love you, that would still be more than anyone else could love them. Let me repeat what I just said. Love yourself so much that if you could love someone else one third of the amount that you love yourself, that would be more than anyone else could possibly love them. That's what I'm playing and dealing with. Should we talk about what love is? What is love? Okay. Love is definitely a sensation. Love is a condition. The body operates differently. The mind operates differently. You feel better, you feel superhuman, you feel good. Dopamine, serotonin, or whatever triggers in the body, it all evolved in us, in human beings. Obviously, if you're Darwinian, those who had love were more successful and it permeated the species to the point now that where enough of us have it or utilize it and can understand the basic feeling. Though I do believe that there are some of us out there, there's some human beings who can't experience love or experience love differently. There's no universal way to experience love. There's no universal love. Love doesn't feel the same to everybody. So I'm sure there are people out there who when they look on TV and people throw the word love around, love this, love that, love, love, love. They, they just, they don't get it. They don't get it. And I don't even mean from trauma or upbringing or cultural or environmental factors. 
that may be inhibited, inhibited them from experiencing. I'm talking about from brain wiring, where the brain just doesn't function the way or kick in those glands and that stimulation from love. So they, they don't get it. It just doesn't happen to them. It can even happen to them from other things. Of course, this would be a minority, I'm assuming. This would be a minority of people. Other things, they can, even from hate, things that they can't stand or things that bug them or things that irritate them could drive those same glands and those sa that same serotonin and that same pleasure release and ener energy to the body that love does. We can't just assume that everybody feels love the same and that love is universal. Nothing is universal. Absolutely nothing is universal. I was just thinking maybe uh, universal, universally saying all humans breathe air. <clears throat> is that universal? Something like that, of course, is going to be universal. <laughs> all planet. Oh, you can't even say all humans live on Earth. That's not universal. It's not universal that all humans live here. We don't know that yet. But anyway, well, probably because it's under the ecosystem of what we involve in our definition of what it is to be human, probably only evolved on this planet. And if it evolved on another planet, it would be different. Okay, not the point. Philosophies and certain things that we just assume are universal are not happy is another one. Everybody wants to be happy. Look on TV, happy, happy, happy. Happy is just assumed to be good. Happy is the best. Everybody wants to be happy. That also is seen to be universal. I believe that there's some people who just don't want to be happy and they're happy not being happy. There's gotta be some people who are wired that happiness hurts. <laughs> happiness may pump stuff to their brain and have their glands working in a way that it hurts. They don't want to be happy. They just want, maybe they just want to chill. We don't know. We can't assume or we shouldn't assume that happy and love and such things are universal. Anyway, I completely forgot my point. Oh, loving thyself. I think I finished that. Nine minutes. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, what I was saying in another video was that I get out here and I write these dailies. I write dailies, I take videos. There's certain topics that I have and that I do. And I notice when I go back and look them over. You know, maybe after over the years, there's a there's a, a trending pattern, or or certain subjects that repeat, like I noticed that a certain time of the year, I'd always not get depressed or feel down or heavy. And I noticed that was with the change of season. And stuff like that. Then I'd go back and I'd read them and I'd actually see where I said the exact same thing. <laughs> Months and years, every month or years at different times. The same sediment. And it's surprising because every time certain things happen to me, it feels like it's brand new. It feels like it's the first time. I guess I think that I am so much in the moment of everything that, you know, it feels like this is the first time I've ever been through this. And then you stop and you think about it. Especially at a, there's a times at a P-Funk show that where they hit that, that thing and that moment comes. It feels like the first time well, somewhat like the first time. Well, not like the first time. That's special. I remember the first time. No, I don't remember the first time. But I'm saying more like I've never had it before. For, saying the first time feels different than saying 
like it's never happened before, which is saying the same thing. But I guess there's a romantic or different connotation when you say it differently. But anyway, the whole point was how I got, how I was going to go with that was that basically I woke up this morning and I'm back to the point of what's the point? I'm back to the point of what's the point? What's the point? I mean, where do we, what am I, what's it all for? I'm not enthused, I'm not energetic, I'm not energized. I'm just, feel like I'm going through the motions. Today is Wednesday. Wednesday is usually a good, fun, easy work day because we have a meeting and the whole staff is there. So with the whole staff there, the phones are usually light because all the calls are spread across more people. And you get an hour during the meeting and the meetings are always fun. So Wednesday is usually a good day. And then I'm off tomorrow. But I'm like, what's the point? What is the point? And I realize, again, I've, I've probably even said this before. It's reoccurring. But I need to find something. I need to find something. I was thinking, I need to plan a trip. I need to go somewhere, start planning a trip and plan that trip for three or four months away so that I can use all that anticipating energy and getting together and doing stuff. Use all that energy to keep me motivated and active, which would also, which also really helps me not eat. Helps me with the bored eating. But I'm like, what's the point? What is the point? What are we doing? It's like we're on hold. What's the point? What, what, what's it all for? Why are we doing this? What are we thinking about? Morning. You know? I'm saving money. Income tax check came in last night. Money ain't a problem. I'm all the lower levels of Maslow's hierarchy are fulfilled, safe, fed, fit. I'm self-actualized without a purpose. <laughs> so I have to develop my own purpose. Maybe this is what this is all for, to develop my own purpose, to develop a new purpose. That's what this is for. Because everything is shut down now. So there's no distractions. It's just you and life. It's just me and life. And I'm getting a long, hard look. I'm forced to get a long, hard look at life in my life, things in my life, things I do, my goals, philosophy. It's 
almost like we're forced to look inward. Well, I am. There's only so many umbrella academies and power and P-Valleys you can watch. But then again, it's football season. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'm happy with them. Not just because they won, because of the way they did it. I'm optimistic, I'm very optimistic, but I'm gonna curb that optimism because I know my football team. <laughs> it ain't never easy. Even when it is, it ain't. But anyhow, what's the point? What is the point? Why are we doing this? To survive? For what? <laughs> I done already been everywhere. I done every done every did everything. Everything is handled and taken care of. So what's the point? Anyway, my name is Jeffrey Scott Mitchell. I hope it sounds like I'm complaining. Because in actuality, I am probably bragging. It's complex. Even for me to understand. Maybe that's what these blogs are about. Maybe this is this video, things that I'm doing to make some different is that it's me talking to a imagine you about me. Hours and hours and hours of me talking to the universe or internet or an imagine you about me. From a severely subjective perspective, a unabashedly unashamed, unapologetic, subjective me perspective, how I see it, diagnosing how I see it, immersed in me and then displaying just how pleasurable it is for me to be immersed in me. And hopefully I'm projecting it in a satirical sort of way, but serious with relevant content and significant content and that it comes off as appealing because I want it to be received. That doesn't mean I want you to like me or not. I don't want you to agree with me or not. I don't want you to any of that. It's not that kind of appealing that I'm looking for. It's just a point to where it can be received, listened to, and absorbed. Because I guess all this talk 
is really me talking about what I think and about me, purely subjective. I remember when I think when I subjective experience, when I looked that up and found out what that was, I liked that. <laughs> I liked that. I liked it that a lot. Subjective. Unabashedly, unabashedly subjective. From the point of view of Jeffrey Scott Mitchell. And I wish that for everyone to have that or to be able to recognize that or to be able to go to that every now and then. Maybe not as much as I do on a daily basis with, <laughs> with 20 minute videos every day. Talking about what I think, what I feel and about me. <laughs> You notice I can feel, I'm filling up 20 minutes of videos every day just talking about me. How many people can do that? And I got lots more to go. <laughs> I can do another 20 minutes. <laughs> I got to hold it in. I got to pull it back. Because I go 40 minutes talking about what I think and what I want, what I don't like, and about me. That's easy. One time we had one of those seminars where we had to get up and talk and we had to do one about ourselves or something that we had to do one about another subject and they asked them, which one is easier for you? I was like, shit. <laughs> I can get up and do an hour on me off the cuff without notes. I can just pull something out of the air and do an hour on me. But then as I got older, I've learned how to pull back, sit quietly, Allow others to say what they have to say, interject, I hope appropriately, and sometimes inappropriately, to break a trend or a rhythm that they might be on that I don't like, because remember, it is so subjective. And regardless, if it's, even if it is about them, if I don't like it, I don't like it. And I have an obligation to myself <laughs> to respond. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. We all have an obligation to ourselves to respond to things that we don't like. <laughs> anyway, I think this was a good talk, don't you? You think this was a good talk? I think this was a good talk. How could it not be? How could it not be a good talk with me talking about me? <laughs> In fact, it, on, my, on my website, I got a category, me about me. So I guess this is like an open letter to myself. This is like an open letter to myself. Where everybody can see and view and absorb and take in and see how I dialogue or perceive or the workings within my head and the workings within what I believe and what I like to think is me. Anyway, I had to turn around. I was walking, this guy walking up there. I got a lot of time, so I turned around a little, walked this way, let him get some distance. I don't like walking by people. And he was walking at a speed that where I would have to jog and I ain't ready to jog yet. So, plus I got extra, I got some time, I left early. And the extra steps ain't gonna kill my body. So if I walk this way while he's walking that way, that increase it. Then when I turn around, you know, and usually I walk way farther anyway, so. It'll, it'll, it'll play out. Anyhow, my name is Jerry Scott Mitchell. 26 minutes. <laughs> 26 minutes. These things are getting longer. And I love it. Don't you? These things are getting longer. They're podcasts. 
Anyhow, my name is Jeffrey Scott Mitchell, and I love me some me. But I couldn't love me some me if it wasn't for y'all. And I love y'all. Why the fuck don't they move over? Why are they gonna stay in that lane? Move over! And I love y'all. Because without y'all, there wouldn't be no me. Huh. How's that subjectively looking at things? Without y'all, there would be no me. So, I love y'all. Even the y'alls that I don't like, I love. Why do people think they need to stay in their lane? I'm going to start walking in their lane just to make a move. See, that's becoming your enemy. That's what you do when you get frustrated or you get to a point where you, you take tactics that you're fighting against. <laughs> Anyhow, my name is Jeffrey Scott Mitchell, and I'm out.